Hey folks, it's January 1st, 2009, and this is the Ticker Guy coming at you from sunny Niceville, Florida. We're having a very nice day today. A little chilly outside, but otherwise okay. Um, let's talk about what's going on. First off, I've gotten a lot of emails from people talking about, you know, hey, how come you, know, you haven't put up a new video? When are you going to get a new one? Listen, guys, you want to daily, nearly daily, sometimes, sometimes more than once a day, update on things. Take a look at market-ticker.org. There is a blog there that I write. And there is almost always a daily post up, especially during the week, and then sometimes take a weekend day off. Well, rather frequently, of late, there have been two or more during a given day. The 2009 prognostication posting is now up and online at that site, along with a scorecard for my 2008 predictions. You can take a look at how well I did, and the 2009 one will be scored at the end of the year, and we'll see how well I do again. Eh? You know? Once again, I'm hoping that we have a more optimistic world than what I am predicting. I am unfortunately, uh, I tend to temper my view by being a little bit optimistic, and as it turns out in 2008, my predictions for the most part turned out to be very optimistic compared to reality. Let's hope we don't get that again. All right, folks, the basis of what's going on here is that we have a credit addict, or rather a debt addict, that is us, that is our government, that is everybody, that is Social Security, it's Medicare, it is welfare, it is all of the public spending that we like to do but we cannot pay for. Yes, yes, people talk about, you know, the military, the war in Iraq, the, 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 guys, it's not, it, it, the most complicated parts of this aren't spending on things like what the detractors would like to call nation building. Hey, listen, Medicare Part D, biggest part of the mess that has been added over the last eight years in public sector spending, had exactly nothing to do with war now, didn't it? So look, we need to get our house in order, and it's going to happen sooner or later. The problem is it's going to come through ways that we don't like. You cannot fix an addict with more of whatever they're addicted to. This is rather obvious. If you're drunk, giving you a bottle of whiskey might make you feel better for a day or two, but if you keep doing it long enough, you're going to start puking up blood, and not too long after that, you're going to keel over dead. This is the path that we are on, folks. Money is, in fact, debt. And you guys got to get this credit thing out of your mind, okay? It's not credit, it's debt. The other side of the credit ledger is always the debt ledger. What you are taking on when you use credit is, in fact, debt. Money is debt. Why? Because the only way money, that is dollars, have any value in the world is because the government in the future is going to be able to raise taxes in order to sustain itself. And guess what? They are essentially bonds. Zero interest, no maturity, no limit. And that means they are debts. Debts of the federal government. Debts of you and I. So when Ben Bernanke goes out and does this kind of thing, He's actually obligating us, and that's a problem because under the Constitution, all revenue bills, that is, things that are supposed to spend, which would obligate the public, have to constitutionally originate in the House of Representatives. Bernanke's latest little scheme to spend $500 billion that, by the way, he's going to create a thin air, that is what funded by new bank reserve means, is unconstitutional because only Congress, the House in sp specifically, has to authorize that first. This is why, by the way, the TARP ESA bill was attached to another bill in the Senate, because legally the Senate could not introduce and pass that bill first. It would be unconstitutional for them to do so, therefore they used this little roundabout scheme and attached it to an existing bill that spent money, which made it legal, because the bill had originated in the House. Now you know why it happened that way. Now the question is, why isn't Bernanke being hauled up in front of the Husco and put in the stocks? <sighs> you know, let's get him in the dock put him in front of Congress. Actually, I like in front of the American people, let us throw some rotten tomatoes. That sounds really good. All right, guys, um, the other thing is the Treasury is effectively kiting checks. You see they had $350 billion allocated in the first tranche of the TARP. Well, by most accountings, they've now spent $360 billion, which is more than they have. When you and I do that kind of thing, knowing, or at least believing, we're going to get our paycheck tomorrow, that's called check kiting. It's a federal offense. It's a serious thing. It is considered bank fraud. It's a form of bank fraud. But it's okay when Henry Paulson does it, right? Well, maybe not. All right, look, let's talk about where we're headed. In 2000, we had the inevitability of a very serious recession that we had to absorb. That is because we created too much debt in the form of all of these wonderful IPOs and all of these wonderful debt financing things in the Internet space that were all backed by a bunch of bullshit collapsed, and as a result, we had to adjust that out of the economy. That means a lot of companies had to go under the weak ones, the ones that really shouldn't be around, because their product and service is not really backed by much. 
Well, we, of course, tried to avoid this by creating huge additional credit. Well, what that did was just make the bubble bigger. Now we've made the inevitable contraction larger. We cast the die in, in the inevitability of a depression, an economic depression, folks, in the year 2001. Not this year, in 2001. What we've done over the last 18 months is make the inevitability of that correction much larger. None of our people in Congress, none of our people on the streets, none of our people in the Federal Reserve or anywhere else want to admit this and take the consequences because we've now gotten to the point where instead of being a pretty nasty recession or a mild depression, by the way, the definition of depression is a 10% contraction in GDP from the top to the bottom. Okay. Now we've gone from a mild one of these things to a really, really bad one because of the incessant hiding of the facts. It doesn't change the fact that it's going to happen. Bernanke has effectively now gone all in. He has now levered up his balance sheet to about 50 to 1. And he said, oh, you know, it'll be okay. That's what his thesis says. Of course, the flaw in his thesis is that he didn't account for the fact that money is, in fact, debt. And when you have too much debt, adding more debt doesn't fix anything, does it? Maybe not. Why has it worked up until now? Because foreigners have been willing to finance these deficits. Foreign governments have been willing to do this. China has been willing to buy all kinds of T-bills in order to absorb the money that would otherwise flow back to them as we buy all the cheap plastic crap. The problem is we're out of the ability to access more credit as Americans. We're about done with that and we've gotten a pretty tough lesson. You know, We bought houses at excessive prices fueled by cheap debt. That bubble burst. Now a lot of people are going bankrupt and people are waking up and saying, hey, you know what, maybe I better not charge that credit card up as far as I can because i got no way to pay it off. Inevitably, these nations that have benefited from this trade imbalance and have bought our treasuries in order to finance this will have to turn that surplus inward. They must. As our consumption falls, they will literally have no other choice. That cuts our funding off. That forces a day of reckoning. When does it come? Eh, tough to say. But I'm willing to bet that we don't get past the second half of this coming year before this becomes a major pressure on America and some form of reckoning is caused. Take a look at where the instabilities have shifted. You're going to see them come out of stocks, although there will be a lot of volatility in stocks. That's going to be the sideshow in 2009. It's going to be the treasury market, the general corporate bond market, and the currency markets. And pay especially close attention to the latter. My thesis has always been that those who think that gold is going to the moon and the dollar is going to collapse are wrong. Not because we're in great shape, but because the rest of the world is screwed worse than we are. See, the problem with being the the pusher that feeds the addict is the only way that you make any money is when the addict consumes your dope. Well, what happens if the addict dies? You've got a bunch of dope. <laughs> no one to sell it to. That's a problem. So, this is what I believe we're going to be seeing in 2009. Obama is, he'll get some kind of a respite for a little while. My expectation is, is that we'll continue to see a little bit of a rally. Hey, listen, it's been a pretty good one off the bottom in the mid-700s, up close to 900 in the S&P. Be very protective, raise cash, get out of debt if you can, and be prepared. The worst is yet to come, both in the United States and elsewhere. But the real news on this, and the real suffering, isn't going to be here. It's going to be overseas. And that's where the instability is going to hit first. Governments are going to be forced to redirect back inward. Oh, and by the way, another thing, watch Britain in particular, and the EU. No more Britain in the EU. Don't be surprised if you see the pound trading at parity to the dollar before the end of 09. That's a harsh prediction, but I think it could happen. Have a good day, and I'll see you around.